Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. This time we are going to go blast from the past and recreate texture a barrel but using Arnold. So I have a very popular video called texture a barrel in Maya and we do a step-by-step -step process on how to create a barrel which we're going to do again. However, this was done in 2015 and Maya has definitely changed. We are now using Arnold and it's got a lot of really different and nicer techniques so and I've received a lot of complaints about this particular tutorial because one it is only a 360 I was new at recording tutorials so you guys are gonna have to forgive me for that I had no idea what I was doing but this tutorial is going to be HD quality and also the quality of the audio is going to be significantly better so we're going to be going over the basics of texturing including how to UV map how to create a texture using Photoshop. We're going to control that specularity. We're going to control that bump map and also render in Arnold. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited. All right. So the first thing you're going to have to do is download that zip file and let's um, take a look at what we get. In this file, you are going to find a bunch of folders. This is the projects. Now, if you have taken my previous eCourses, you probably will recognize these files. These are project files that Maya provides. This is under Barrel, and under here, you're going to look at Images. In Images, you're going to find References and Textures. Under Reference, you are going to find some images. The first thing any industry professional is going to tell you is to look at Reference, Reference, Reference. So let's take a look at some references. These are some of the things I found under Google and I was looking at new barrels. So how do new barrels look like? So you can see that we've got some wood and we have some metal strips. So that's going to be very important to us. Now, some of them are scraped up so you can tell that they're already being used, but you know, these look pretty new in comparison to something like this. Now you can see how old they are just because of the rust and the stains and how they've been well treated. You can see some of the stains leaking, the leak stains probably from outside. Rust usually is from outside. And you can also see how this shininess of the metal starts to fade away when there's rust around. So that's going to be really important to capture. Here's one that's completely great. All the metal has disappeared and there's no shininess whatsoever. That's because it's been outside so much that it basically has lost all of its nice metallic part of it. So those are the type of observations you need to make when you're taking a look at your references. Not only that, I'm also interested in creating some sort of environment for this scene. So I'm thinking maybe an archway, you know, like a tunnel with a bunch of barrels or have you guys ever been to um, Napa Valley? I'm from the Bay Area in California. There is this beautiful area called Napa Valley that has a ton of vineyards. This is Robert Mondavi. I've actually visited before and it looks like a video game. So I'm not making this, but it's really fun. You should check it out. It's actually pretty, pretty stunning stuff. Um, so anyway, I was just kind of looking at wine cellars, but really what I want to focus is on is the barrel. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about color and then we're going to go into the real nice details of bump maps, specularity maps, and how to control all of your textures using Photoshop. So right now we have references. Let's go back into images, take a look at textures. I've already gathered some stuff for you guys. Um, I've gathered some concrete. Um, I've also grabbed some stains, some drip masks drip maps. Then we've got some masks that we're going to use. Don't worry, all of this will make sense when we go over it. Some metal, because of course we have some metal. Moss, rust, gross rust, and of course some wood. So it's really important to start gathering your textures. Now, where do you get these textures? Um, I get them at uh, textures.com with a plural, textures.com. Uh, you can download a lot of these textures for free. So there is a budget for the day, but this is a fantastic place where you can find some great textures. This is where I found concrete. This is where I found wood. So take a look at textures.com. But for your reference, I went ahead and provided you the files that we're going to be using for this project. But again, you can download these and way more at textures.com. All right. And finally, we have in our scenes, we have our barrel, which is where we're going to start. So usually when we have a scene, the first thing we have is blank. We open up Maya, then we're going to set our project, file set project. You can see I have a ton of projects and let's look for our barrel that we have unzipped. Let's go to set, file, open, 
and then select that scene. Now this step is very, very important. You need to set your project every single time you're about to open a file, especially when it comes to texturing. Modeling, maybe not so much because modeling, you just have a model. But when it comes to textures, there's actually things that are linked together and you need to reference them a lot. So setting your project is the best way you can get this file to work. Otherwise, it's going to be confused and not know what to do. So make sure that you set your project. All right, let's call this something, something that makes sense. Barrel Geo underscore Geo. That is usually the naming convention that I use. And you'll notice that up here at the top right under our attributes, so control A, we have a Lambert one, we have our geo shapes and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to be focusing mostly is on our shader and also our geometry. Now, before we get started, we need to UV map it first. So in this video tutorial, we are going to UV map this barrel relatively quickly. Now, again, I'm assuming that you have watched my previous e-courses and there is one called UV mapping. So make sure you take a look at that um, before you continue on because you might get lost. Hopefully you already know how to UV map so this shouldn't be too too much of a struggle. Up here at the top right, Maya Classic, let's go to UV editing and you'll notice right away that this is not going to work. I'm going to turn off this checker and yikes, let's, yeah, that's not going to work at all. Um, if we turn on this checker, you're going to see how if we actually had a texture on this, it would be a disaster and we would not this is not functional so let's UV map all right so usually what I do is take a look at the shape and figure out what shape what UVs can I use well I'm going to use the top and bottom as planar and then the rest is going to be cylindrical so let's go ahead and go to faces I am going to go to the side view and I'm going to make my selection Take a look up here and I'll notice that I've selected probably too much. So I might want to go to the top view and then deselect holding down control. So I'm just going to select this area or deselect this area. Oops, still missed a couple of them. Let's go back here. Uh, you can always click, control, click, double click, click, double click. Again, I'm holding down control, control, click, double click, and that will deselect the whole circle. We probably want this. Oops, undo. Try that again. So if I click on shift, click, double click right next to it, usually it will do a ring. So let's go at the bottom here. So again, control, click, double click next to it and that will deselect it. You see this one? Control click, double click, and it will do the whole ring. It's just a little nice shortcut. If you're not sure if you grabbed everything, what I always suggest is grabbing this little guy right here, which is select. And then you can just see if there's any floating faces that you don't want really quickly. It's kind of like a nice little tool. So again, it's this little guy right here, which is isolate select. Deselect that and everything comes back. All right. So this is the cylinder part. I'm going to go to UVs, cylindrical mapping. I'm going to move it aside. Now the rest, and probably close this while I'm at it, the rest is actually the top and the bottom. So I might as well select the faces here at the top, UV map, planar mapping options. Whoop. Let's use the Y, keep image with aspect, keep image with height ratio on, apply. And there we go. Let me just grab one, move it aside. Cool. All right, next, this guy, if I turn this on, you're going to see that it's looking way, like, way better, but it's still really stretched out. If I try to put a texture on there, which theoretically is a square, you're going to notice it's a rectangle, so that's really not going to work. So what we're going to do next is take a look on our UV toolkit over here, and we are going to just click open up unfold and say unfold. Now, I'm going to turn this off. It looks a lot better. It's definitely look like squares, but the issue is, is that it's starting to, as you can see right here, turning this off, it's starting to bend and flex. And that wouldn't be a problem, except that it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, if we take a look at it, it should be pretty straight. I mean, there's nothing really organic about this. It's pretty straight. So we need to be able to straighten it. And you'll also notice that we're getting this really crazy pinching around this, what's called the seam. 
So this is the edge where the left side and the right side of the barrel, or at least so the UVs meet. And you can see that it's going to be very hard to paint something in here. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to end my face mode. Again, you can right click, go to faces, double click on this. So you get get that whole selection. And this really handy thing called right here called straighten UVs. If I click on that, it will straighten them for me, which is really nice because now I have a really nice clean edge and my UVs are looking pretty, pretty nice. And also uh, the numbers are facing the right way. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at these guys here. I'm going to double click on this same story. I'm going to click on a fold, double click on this one, unfold, and they're looking pretty nice. All right, now that we have the UVs, the next thing is to do what's called the layout. The layout just means that we need to place it in the zero to one space. And we also have to keep an eye on the how large these little squares are because they need to be the same size. Otherwise, the texture density is going to be very different. So what I'm going to do is select both of these guys. Again, right click faces. You can click faces or UVs. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to go to layout down here at the bottom. And then we're going to click on layout. And it's going to do a pretty good job in trying to lay it out for us. So the squares are about the same and it kind of crams it all in here. Now, I'm not a fan of having the UVs super duper close to the edge. I actually really don't like that. So again, I'm going to go to faces. I'm going to select everything and just kind of scale it down a little bit uniformly. And then I'm going to grab these guys and just kind of move them. Now, which one's the top and which one's the bottom? We don't know. So what I like to do is select this and just kind of make sure that this is the top and if there's enough room, which there isn't, I'm just going to make sure that this is the top and then this one's the bottom. It's a lot of empty UV space, unfortunately, but we have everything that we need, so we should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and go back to Maya Classic. Let's uh, delete the history. Freeze the transformation, center the pivot if you like, and we are ready to rock and roll. File save as. I personally have a naming convention of barrel version 2 UV done. And we are ready to bring this into, photo, into uh, Photoshop. So that was a quick tutorial on how to create UVs for a barrel. Everything's looking really nice. We might as well just go ahead and use that UV texture editor. And we are going to go to image, a UV snapshot. We're going to browse again. If you set your project, it will automatically place it in images. So make sure you have set your project. And we're going to type this as barrel underscore UV snap. I'm going to change this into a TIFF just because that's one of my favorites. But some people like to use Targa. Some people like to use PNGs. I do not recommend JPEGs, um, but uh, try anything you like. I'm going to leave it at 2048 and then apply and close. What did that do? Well, if I go into my images, you will now find a barrel UV snap, which means that it's ready to go into Photoshop or into any software that paints. Um, all right, I think that's a good place to stop. Let's go ahead and make sure that we save this and we already have it ready. So in the next video tutorial, we are gonna go over how to create a color map. So I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions by leaving a comment below. And of course, please subscribe to my channel and like and share if you found this helpful. If you have time, please stop by academicphoenixplus.com where you will find free tutorials, free ebooks, free downloads, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. It's got a lot of free resources for you. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time in the next tutorial.